It was my second wedding, and this time, everything was different. There was no white dress, no rings, flowers, friends, or family. Just the two of us beside the river with a couple of witnesses and our marriage officiant. Lovingson and I had both been married once before, followed all the conventions, and still found ourselves divorced. So this time, we decided to stick with what matters most, the covenant. Even though we didn't follow any of the standard wedding traditions, we both got exactly what we wanted, our God-given desire for a Christ-centered marriage. I'm Lily Matanguiza, and this is the Forever Love Podcast. And today, I want to talk about love. What is it? How do we express it? And how do we enjoy more of it? What is love? Now that's a loaded question. Ultimately, love is the most powerful force in the universe. It's what we as humans were designed for, We were designed by God for love, but love is also elusive. Even in the presence of it, it can be hard to detect. Consider this. We know that God loves us 24-7, all day and all night. God is consistently loving us. The light of his love is always on and it never goes out. But how often do you feel it? I mean really, deeply, and truly feel the love of God for you. Not just the intellectual knowledge of it, but the emotional experience of it. I don't know about you, but for me, in all honesty, it's not that often. And that's because the feeling of love does not come from others to us. When someone loves us, even when that love is 100% and from our own creator, we don't feel it until we think about it. It's always there, but we don't experience the emotion of it until we have a thought about that love. This is why worship, prayer, and time spent with God is so important because it gives us an opportunity to meditate on the love of God and experience his love for us. But what about inside of a romantic relationship? Well, when it comes to romantic love, it's the same thing. Just because someone loves you doesn't mean you're going to automatically feel that love. And you might also feel loved by someone even though they don't actually have any feelings for you. This is why self-love is so important. We don't want to get into situations where we're feeling starved for love and then desperately depending on our relationships to make us feel better. One of the problems many women face is mixing up our definitions and expectations of what the emotional experience of love will feel like. In the Song of Solomon, it says, Love is as strong as death. This is actually an excellent insight because, like death, love is steady and consistent. But death, unlike love, separates us. Love connects us. The love of God towards you is an intentional choice that keeps God connected to you regardless of your thoughts, feelings, or actions. Love is powerful. And like a river that runs deep, it may seem calm on the surface, but there's depth and life within it. The problem is, we tend to mix the emotional experience of love with other emotions, like passion, attraction, euphoria, ecstasy, and sometimes even lust. When we fail to recognize the difference between these emotions, we could end up being discouraged because our experience of love seems rather dull in comparison. This happens partly because when our friends and Hollywood movies describe love, they're usually describing those other really exciting emotions, but labeling them as love. But when we look at what love really means, it's not like that at all. I like to imagine establishing Christ-centered romantic relationships like building a house. You have to start with a mutual relationship with God through Jesus Christ as your foundation. Then you build upon that with the structures of relationship skills, like maintaining healthy boundaries, 
honesty, integrity, communication, playfulness, and commitment. Finally, you add love as your roof. Love is what covers you. It protects the relationship. It is patient and kind. Without a foundation, walls, and roof, you don't have a house. When you're going out in pursuit of your God-given desire for a Christ-centered marriage, you have to take that shelter of love with you. I always tell my students, guard your heart with love, not from it. That means you need to show up with an abundance of love for yourself and the other person. We don't need to wait and see if we can love someone. We can choose to follow the first commandment and love everyone ahead of time. Now, that doesn't mean you start a romantic relationship with everyone, but it does set you up for the possibility of one because you're coming to the table with something of value to offer. Unfortunately, these days, most people show up to a date with empty hands and hearts and wait to see what they can get out of a relationship. This approach does not serve you. It doesn't feel good either. When we show up with the underlying question of, what am I going to get out of this? Coupled with the fear of wasting our time, we're showing up with the emotion of lack and scarcity. I don't have enough time for this relationship, but I'll be able to justify it to myself later if it all works out in my favor. This kind of thinking puts an enormous amount of pressure on yourself and your brain automatically goes to work trying to decide whether or not the investment of time was worthwhile. And since you're already a nervous investor, your brain will want to keep you as safe as possible and pull out at the first sign of any loss. And to be clear, this is happening on both sides of the relationship. When men and women are coming to the table with this perception, is it any wonder why dating relationships are so fickle? But it doesn't have to be this way. You can be the change you want to see in the world. You can be the light of Christ. You can choose to show up with love, not for it. Remember, love will not hurt you. There's no such thing as loving someone too much. Love feels amazing. So I want to encourage you to enjoy as much of it as possible. I want to leave you with this last insight. You have to love yourself first. I know that's hard because in today's church culture, loving yourself has been equated with worshiping yourself as your own personal God and doing whatever you want at the expense of others. But that's not what self-love is at all. Here's the danger of misinterpreting the idea of putting others before yourself. When we love others at our own expense and destroy ourselves trying to make other people happy, first of all, we're doing it all in vain. We do not have the power to control other people's emotional experiences with our actions. It just doesn't work. And secondly, we fail to recognize, honor, and appreciate who we are in Christ and what God wants to do through us. Instead, I want you to start by asking yourself this question. What do I really want and need? And how can I take personal responsibility for meeting those needs? Second, ask, now that I'm taken care of, What is the kindest, most loving thing I can do for those affected by my decisions? This is the best way to love your neighbor as yourself because it starts with taking responsibility for yourself and allows you to pour out from a place of abundance. What I see a lot of women doing is this. Imagine this. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a beautiful vessel and you were designed to be able to pour out into the lives of others. But you don't see yourself that way. You see yourself as unimportant. It's not about you. What you want doesn't really matter. And so instead of seeing yourself as this beautiful vessel, you see yourself more like a disposable styrofoam cup. And the world around you has needs that are much more important than your own. And so you start pouring out. Pretty soon you start to run low. But because you don't matter, you just keep going. You keep bending over backwards to pour out into the lives of others. Unfortunately, you get to the point where you can't bend any further, but you still feel compelled to give. And since you're just one styrofoam cup and you don't really matter, you poke a hole in the side of your cup and pour out a little bit more. And it's such a relief to be able to make someone happy. 
but once again, your levels sink below the hole. So you poke another one, and another, and another, until you're completely empty. Finally, you realize that you need a refill, but you look around and you see that all the other cups are full of holes too. They have nothing to give. Who's going to pour into your life? You assumed that if you gave enough of what you had to offer, eventually someone would come along and pour into you as well, right? You thought that going to church and worshiping God would fill you up, but even though the love flows through you and you get to experience it for a moment, you can't actually carry any of it out with you because as soon as it goes in, it immediately leaks back out. But it doesn't have to be this way. You are not a styrofoam cup. You are a beautiful, intricate, specially designed, one-of-a-kind vessel. And if you've got some holes in you, I want to encourage you to go back to the Father and let him patch you up. Because in order to be effective in pouring into the lives of others, you have to be made whole. Show up whole and complete, filled from the inside out with the love of God and pour into the lives of others from deep, abundant, living waters. This, my friend, is one of the best ways you can bring glory and honor to God and share the love of Christ with others. And you can do all of that while pursuing your God-given desire for a Christ-centered marriage. That's all for today. Thank you so much for investing your time here with me. I'm Lily Matanguiza, and this has been another episode of the Forever Love Podcast. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by my free Relationship Starter Course. Discover the first step to an equally yoked, Christ-centered relationship. In this free course, you're going to learn who you are in Christ, what your core values are, and how to attract an equally yoked partner. Your marriage matters, and I believe that the best time to prepare for it is now, while you're single. That's why I created this brand new three-part mini training series to teach single women how to love themselves deeply and authentically for who they are in Christ, so that they can establish healthy, Christ-centered relationships. When you know who you are, and more importantly, whose you are, you'll never settle for less than God's best. Go to Proverbs2426.com slash start. That's Proverbs2426.com slash start and begin today. If you've enjoyed listening to this episode, I want to encourage you to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the tools, wisdom, and stories that will support you on your journey towards forever love. This has been another episode of the Forever Love Podcast with Lily Matanguiza. Thanks for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.